Marin coast could be struck by a tsunami. Knowing what a tsunami is and taking the right precautions to protect yourself and your family can make all the difference. In recent years, tsunamis have caused thousands of deaths and billions of dollars worth of damage. Over 220,000 people were killed as a result of the Indian Ocean tsunami in 2004. This was a tsunami triggered by an earthquake off the coast of Indonesia. Devastating waves traveled throughout the Indian Ocean. Indonesia, Thailand, Sri Lanka, and India were hit the hardest. Tsunamis also pose a real threat to Marin. Generally, two types of tsunamis could hit our coastline. A local tsunami caused by a significant earthquake or an underwater landslide near our coast could reach us within minutes. So if you are on the coast and feel the ground shake or see the water suddenly recede, immediately head for high ground and get as far inland as possible. Marin might also be hit by a distant source tsunami a significant earthquake anywhere around the Pacific Rim could produce waves that would reach the Marin coast within hours. In this case, there should be enough time for an official warning and evacuation of the coast before the waves hit. If a tsunami is detected, NOAA immediately alerts the state of California. The state contacts Marin County Dispatch. We're going to get information on a tsunami that's going to hit in Marin County's Office of Emergency Services notifies local emergency responders which includes law enforcement, fire departments, the Coast Guard, and the National Park Service. The Marin Dispatch Center also activates their telephone emergency notification system, a reverse 911. Do not stay in risk. Residents receive a phone call from the county alerting them to the danger. If you feel the earth shake or are advised by public safety personnel to get away from the coast, don't stay around to watch the tsunami happen head immediately for higher ground. Whether you live in Marin County, visit the beaches, or rent or own a home here, it's vital to understand the tsunami threat and take preparation seriously. This is a story of what several West Marin communities are doing. Salinas is unique in the fact that it's a small coastal town. We are surrounded on several sides by the beach. The Pacific Ocean is right here. It comes right in through this channel, up into the lagoon area. Being this close to the ocean makes us especially vulnerable to tsunamis. If a tsunami does happen, it will directly affect the heart of Bolinas. Tsunamis in Bolinas have long been a concern of ours because of the unique layout of the town. We have a great deal of our downtown businesses and residences are along the beach and right along the coastline here. And we know that in town here, we have just over 200 houses and businesses that are in the tsunami inundation zone. So we've thought for quite a while about if a tsunami were to happen, how would we go about evacuating, who would we need to evacuate, and where are they going to go? So this area, all this area in here is considered to be in the inundation zone. And at the end of this road is the beach where hundreds of people come and visit. This up here to the right is Terrace Avenue, which is where if we had to do an evacuation exactly where we would direct people to go, or potentially up this road here, which is the Little Mesa, if we can get folks to go up there. Um, preferably, we're going to be asking people not to be in their vehicles, depending on how much time we have, how much advance warning we have for evacuation for folks. The last thing we're going to do is ask people to evacuate. If we're asking you to evacuate, we've pretty much decided that that's what has to be done. And it's not um, a dry run. This is not just a practice. So if we do ask folks to evacuate, we need them to do that. One of our big target concerns in Blinas is the Blinas School. We have about 100 students here on any given day. This is another low-lying area, also lined with residences along the other side of the road. It's a big concern getting the kids evacuated out of the school in the event of a tsunami. And we have trained with the school. Um, we do have disaster drills every year with them. The last drill we did was a tsunami evacuation drill, where if we do have a significant amount of time, um, enough warning, the kids will get dismissed from the school, loaded on the bus, taken to higher ground, and then they're evacuated to their parents, they're dismissed to their parents from higher ground. 
they're taken out of the school. If it's a shorter amount of time, if we don't have enough time to load up all the kids on the school bus, there are two different ways. They can walk at the back side of the school. The firehouse lays just about kitty corner to the school. They can walk up the hill and get up to higher ground, or they can walk out Olima Blinas Road up Horseshoe Hill Road and get to higher ground. One of our main concerns in Stetson Beach is our beach is a southwest facing beach. And if we have a tsunami coming out of the southwest, that would definitely do a lot of damage to Stetson Beach. As soon as I get notification that there's a tsunami coming, I walk over here and I'll set off the town emergency warning system. That'll alert everybody in town that it's time to start their evacuation. If there was a tsunami and it was a weekend, there's going to be a large crowd out here. We're only going to have one route that we can evacuate people on, and that would be Panoramic Highway. The reason for that is if we put them on Highway 1 south of Stenson Beach, Stenson Beach gets hit with a tsunami. Well, so will Muir Beach, and then you would have thousands of people trapped on a uh, state highway with nowhere to go. What we're doing now is we're going down to the very end of Sea Drift, and that would be where I would start my evacuation point. So we're going to bring all our equipment down here, all the fire trucks, everything that has a PA system and a siren, and start bringing it up, you know, waking everybody up, or hopefully this won't happen in the middle of the night. To evacuate people off of uh, Stenson Beach, what we're going to do is use four-wheel drive vehicles, uh, such as what I drive, and Sea Drift Security has one, Park Service uh, lifeguards. Park Service Rangers have four-wheel drive vehicles, and we'll go up and down the beach, PA and people, and letting them know that they need to head for higher ground because there's likelihood of a tsunami is going to happen. One of our concerns should there be a tsunami is the children here at the uh, local Stenson Beach School. And we've developed a plan to evacuate those children should we get a tsunami or an earthquake right off the California coast. And We've had the hillside next to the Stenson Beach School cleared and the kids know through practice that they are to run right up that hillside and hunker down next to the trees that are up on the uh, side of the school there. And we will come and get them as soon as we possibly can. Uh, should we have plenty of warning for a, a tsunami, of course we're gonna evacuate the kids to safer ground near their homes at Stenson Beach and Bolinas. We do evacuation drills monthly over here at the uh, Stenson Beach School. Each classroom has a pack with every child's name in it if they have any special needs for medications or anything like that. And then we have a release plan and each child has three friends that they're allowed to be released to. And we track those uh, children through that way so that we could gather all the children and make sure that they're all safe and in their uh, right place. Point Reyes National Seashore is part of the National Park Service. And we have beaches from Bolinas all the way to the tip of Tomales Point and on the west side of Tomales Bay. For any kind of water emergency, the most likely place that we're going to encounter it for a tsunami is um, the biggest impact in the park will probably be Limantour Beach because that's one of the most heavily visited park, parts of the park. And, uh, and it's the quickest access from our headquarters, uh, so we would be able to make the biggest impact in contacting visitors and, uh, and getting them to safety. So if this were an actual tsunami warning, it would have the bullhorn and we'd hike up here to the high spot above the beach. And the bullhorn has a siren feature on it, so I would use the siren to get everybody's attention. And once we sounded it a couple of times, I would make an announcement to people on the beach that this is a tsunami warning and that everybody needs to leave the beach and go up to high ground. So if you're at the beach and you feel the ground shaking, or if you look out and see that the water dramatically is receding, then you need to know that a tsunami could come at any time and get to high ground as quickly as you can. And go beyond the dunes. The dunes won't protect you. You'll have to go for as high ground as you can get to.
right now we're in Dillon Beach and we're overlooking Lawson's Landing. And immediately out to my right, in the, which is the west, you can see the Pacific Ocean. And so all that is just going to funnel directly into here, um, into Lawson's Landing at the Day Beach and further back at the landing itself, which is the trailers out there. And those are the lowest points that we have um, in Tamales, which is the highest uh, population density. So those are my biggest concerns. As you can see, all these trailers are, these are all um, permanent housing, summer vacation rentals, but they're pretty densely packed through here. And so this is one of our biggest concerns about getting all these campers and residents out. There's one way in, so it's, it's very narrow roads. If somebody parks wrong, you can't get out. So it's just gonna be a major nightmare if that were to happen down here. The, uh, the Lawson's family has been very helpful. They do have a NOAA um, tsunami alert station in their kiosk, and so they would notif be notified right away if, if something were to happen, if a tsunami alert were to, to be sounded. And so we would be working with them and trying to get people out in a timely manner. So if you were on this beach, when you heard the tsunami warning, I'd like you to leave the dunes, get, gather your family, and start heading directly north up the road towards Dillon Beach. Just a quick walk away. Leave your car here, leave your tents here, leave it all set up, and just get you and your family out of here. We don't know exactly how much time we have before the tsunami hits. Regardless of the disaster, whether it be a tsunami, an earthquake, a wildland fire, there's a couple of basics we really need you to pay attention to. First of all, have a plan. Practice the plan. Have a kit in case you need to evacuate, and be informed. Have a way to stay informed. I cannot stress enough the importance of you needing to get personally involved in your community disaster preparedness. Take a Get Ready Marin class. Take the CERT training we offer. Get involved in your community and your community disaster council. You know, people come up to firefighters all the time and ask us, are we ready? Are we ready for the next disaster? And our response back to them is, are you ready? responding to Limantour. What acre engine 880 is en route to start evacuations of Stenson Beach? Engine 880, ready to evacuate. 